You'll likely want or already be using a message broker that supports at least once delivery. What is at least once delivery? Well, it guarantees that a message will be delivered once or more, meaning that you have the same message that can be delivered to a consumer possibly multiple times. Having a duplicate message in your system could have some very negative impacts. For example, an order being placed twice. So why do duplicates occur and how do we deal with them? Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. All right, so first let's talk about delivery guarantees really quick, just so you understand what all three are that message brokers support. They don't all support this. They generally support um, probably one or two, but they are at most once. And really what this means is that a message will get delivered to a consumer maybe once, meaning that it might not at all, or at most it will get um, delivered once. There's at least once, which I think is probably what you're going to pick a message broker that supports. And that means again, that a message will get delivered guaranteed at least once, but it could get delivered more than once. And I'll explain why. And then there's the kind of mythical, really hard exactly once that some uh, brokers or event logs support. But again, we're gonna focus on at least once. All right, so the way that at least once generally works is that your message broker will send a message to your consumer, and then you have your application code that basically consumes that message, does some work, whatever it is with it. And whether you explicitly do it or not, depending on the library that you're using, generally what happens is that you send an acknowledgement back to the message broker. And this is basically telling the message broker that that message was successfully processed. So at this point, because our message broker know that the, knows that the message was processed, it won't deliver that to another consumer. So why do duplicates occur? Well, for one is that if we d deliver our message to the consumer, but like I said, maybe explicitly the library you're using, you have to send back the acknowledgement. Well, maybe you don't. You completely forget to do it for whatever reason in code in a particular scenario, and you don't send the acknowledgement. Well, generally what the brokers have is a timeout. They expect an acknowledgement back after a certain period of time. If you've never sent it, then they're gonna resend that message to a consumer. And if you've already processed it technically in code and you've done some state change, well, now you have a duplicate. The also the same scenario is because there is that timeout, maybe you do send the acknowledgement, but you don't do it within that time frame that the message broker expects. So it, again, it could possibly send that message before you even send the acknowledgement. So another reason why this might occur is that if you are using the outbox pattern, like I posted in my previous video, where you have your producer publishing messages, not immediately to the message broker, but rather a database where you're doing your state changes, what happens then is you have the producer fetch those records from the database, and then it publishes those to your message broker. And then what it needs to do is it needs to go update the database where it pulled those messages and events from saying that either deleting the records or marking them as being published. And that's all great, but what happens when it can't go back and update those records? What that means is the next iteration where it goes and pulls from the database for what it needs to publish, it's gonna republish those same messages to the message broker. So there's another reason why you could have duplicates. All right, so we've established that duplicates are gonna happen, so how do we actually deal with them? Let's jump into some code. All right, so I'm in my loosely coupled monolith project, and you're looking at the create shipping label uh, which is in my shipping context here, and I'm handling the order placed event that is coming from sales. So I just have the DB context from on the shipping side where I'm adding a new shipping label and then saving it. So a way to handle this is to keep track of what messages we've actually processed for each consumer. So what that means is we're going to create a new table in our database that lives alongside this other, these other tables like my shipping label so that we can wrap all this in a transaction so that we can make our state change and record what message we, uh, messages we've actually processed. So I've created this item potent consumer that's gonna be an entity for an entity framework which has the message ID and the consumer. And then in my database context here, uh, the message ID and the consumer are actually going to be the primary key or basically whatever database you're using, you ultimately want this to be uh, to have a unique constraint so that when you actually commit that transaction, we're only ever going to be able to do that if that combination of message ID and consumer does not ex exist yet in that table. Because if it does, it means that we've already processed that message. And again, because we're doing it with all the same transaction as our other state change, it's kind of an all or nothing here. It's gonna be one atomic operation. All right, so I've added two new methods in my shipping database context. 
I bet the first method is called item potent consumer, where we take the message ID and the consumer, and we're just adding a new record for the item potent messages that I've added that we just looked at. So this is the DB set for it. And then we're just gonna call save changes. Then I've added another method called has been processed, where we're just taking the same message ID and consumer and checking that DB set to see if that already exists within our database. So we're gonna use these two methods now to handle duplicates. All right, so because we need the message ID, what I can do is get it from the header. We'll call this message ID. And now because I have that, ex uh, that new method that I created to check to see if it exists, what I can do is has been processed and we'll pass it the message ID. And then the reason why this is done is by consumer is because that you may have events that are processed by different actual handlers in different contexts. So again, you wanna be doing this deduplication per actual handler. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the name of the create shipping label or actual method here. So now if we've actually, um, if we have processed this, then I can just return early and that's the end of it. We don't need to process this again. All right, so now we actually need to record that we've actually processed this message and basically save it to our database. So what I can do now is use that other method, an potent consumer where we're gonna pass the message ID and then the same thing, I'm gonna use the name of the create shipping label, just like we're doing in our check. But the key here is because this save changes is occurring, by default, the way Entity Framework works is that it wraps a, um, a transaction in this call, but because I put the save changes in here as, as well, we wanna make sure this is all a part of the exact same transaction. Just so for illustration purposes, let's make that happen. So we'll do database context.database.begin transaction async. I'll await this. And then we'll do trx.commit async. And then I will move all this code subsequently up here. So now, a part of all one single transaction, I'm gonna be adding our shipping label, uh, saving it, which is gonna hit the database, but it's still a part of our transaction. We're gonna add our item potent consumer record to say that we've processed this particular message ID for this particular consumer. And then we're gonna commit that transaction. So again, this is gonna be basically one atomic operation that if at some point, if we were got by this part because we're processing everything concurrently, this will just make us exit early as well as this, there's no way that if two or more of these happened all at the same time, only one would ever be able to commit this transaction because there can only be one combination of message ID and the consumer string because we made that a unique constraint in the database. So one thing to note with this is that when this commit happens and we try to save these changes either here or here, if that record exists in that item potent table, item potent consumer table, you're gonna get an exception from amenity framework. Now you might want to handle that exception so that you can essentially swallow a duplicate key, but that's going to be dependent on the database you're using to try to figure out, was it a duplicate key exception for this? That's why I'm kind of not showing that code because it's going to be dependent on if you're using SQL Server or MySQL and how you do that. But again, if, you, if something gets thrown here because it's a duplicate key exception, like I showed in the first couple slides, this is never going to technically give an acknowledgement back to the broker that it worked. So if you have retries built in with your broker, your messaging library, it's gonna get called again, but the next time it gets called, ultimately, that's why I put this here, is that it's gonna exit early. So this is really just a safeguard against kind of the concurrency of having your, basically these messages possibly execute at the exact same time or multiples of them execute at the exact the same time for the exact same message. All right, so I'm gonna give this a run and kind of show debug, show how this works. I'm just gonna add a breakpoint there. I'm already running it. I'm gonna jump in Postman and I'm going to create an order which will ultimately fire off the order placed event. So I'll do that. I'll jump back over here. So we can see our worker now, um, the consumer, has gotten this message. So we're checking to see if it's been processed. And we are going to add our shipping label. We'll save. We're adding our record to the item potent consumer. We're committing that transaction. Then subsequently, so that all worked fine. 
if I jump over to the dashboard for CAP, these are the published messages. This is the one we just published. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-enqueue it as if we were sending it again for some reason. And I'm gonna jump back over here. So that message, we're gonna check to see if it's been processed and it has, so we're just gonna exit early and it looks like it succeeded again. So that's how you deal with duplicate messages. And essentially what you've done is you made your consumers item potent. Now, one thing that you may have thought of is that you really don't need to do this necessarily if things are naturally item potent. So what that means is that you don't need to keep track of messages if, depending on what you're doing in your consumers and your handlers, um, they don't have any bad side effects if you re-ran them twice. An example of this is let's say I had a uh, order canceled um, event and my consumer for that, that handler, was just changing some status. If the status was already canceled because it ran more than once and I wasn't emitting another event or doing anything else and there were no other side effects, then setting the status from canceled to cancel again isn't really that big of a deal. So do I really need to uh, concern myself about keeping track of the messages and doing it that way when it's just kind of naturally idempotent because there's no other side effects of that change. So one thing you may be thinking of now is to deal with a long running process and maybe you need to process messages in a particular order or so you think you need to be um, applying them in a particular order. So I'm gonna cover that in a video soon about sagas. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and of course, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe if you're into software architecture and design. Also a big thank you to the new members who join my Code Opinion channel. I really do appreciate it. They'll have access to the slides that I had in this video. If you're interested in becoming a member, click the join button for more details. Thanks.